Hey guys, my name is Tito. I make videos on personal finance. On my other channel, on this channel, I talk about other things like today when I'll be reviewing the new Nollywood film on Netflix before Valentine's. Now, before Valentine's is a, let's call it a rom-com. <laughs> it's about um, these characters who work in a salon in Lagos and the things that they get up to on the day before Valentine's Day. Now, this film actually came out in 2022. I saw it a year ago, 11th of February, 2022 if i'm not mistaken and i saw it that day and um, now it's on netflix a year later and i didn't do a review back then because i wasn't too impressed with it i'm still not impressed with it but hey it's on netflix now so let's talk about it this also will be a spoiler filled review i'm assuming those of you that are watching this review have already seen the movie let's dive into it now the film i think is about how people live fake lives particularly in lagos i mean you have sugar this young woman who pretends to be um available and you know a sophisticated city girl but actually she's a mother she has a child and her, she's from the village and her mom you know and her son are from the village as well but she gives off this vibe of being a sophisticated rich city girl there's also tamara this young woman who is married to a much older man but she hides him and her, that side of her life from her colleagues and then you have chica this born again christian type of woman who in actual fact is sleeping around with a married man and collecting money from a married man. So all these people are like living different lives, but they're, they're you know, put, putting up, is that the term? Putting up appearances for their colleagues in the salon. Now, um, the performances, the acting in this movie is not the best. And it's if, I think it's a function of the fact that this film is not entirely original. It tries very hard, in my opinion, to model itself after like a, after American rom-coms. If you've seen Barbershop and um, Beauty Shop, the American comedies from a few years ago, you'll see the similarities. It, it tries very hard to be an American rom-com, you know, in a salon, you know, where things are happening. People are coming in and, you know, they're different characters. There are just so many of those stereotypical roles and characters in this thing. And the dialogue and the, just the things happening in the, in the movie felt very very foreign and i wasn't particularly a fan of that and i think because of that because this film was trying to be something that it's not and something that is not natural to our nigerian environment if you ask me it now made the performances the acting in the thing very hard to connect with it not necessarily that it was the performances were bad they were just very disingenuous and it, w it was just hard for me to relate to the characters and to their banter and to their dialogue and to the things that that they were doing and the happenings in the salon great cast although you have megotanwa whose real birthday actually is valentine's day you have um uche montana you have the lovely bolaji ogumola you have ben tutu in the film you have venita pofre you have the amazing sean Fakwa, and a host of other you know actors and uh, guest appearances in this film it had potential but it shot itself in the foot by trying to be something that it's not. So that's that about that. Now, what I liked about this movie, you, it would interest you to know, as somebody who actually really likes rom-coms, there was nothing in this film before Valentine's that I actually liked. Moving on to what I didn't like about this film. Pull up a chair because I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> I didn't like, like I said, that this film was very inauthentic. It tried very hard to, to be an American rom-com. And with that... I kept on asking myself, who is this film trying to appeal to? Nigerians aren't going to connect with it because it doesn't feel, it feels disingenuous. It doesn't feel authentic. Their dialogue, their banter, their things, the things going on in that salon just felt very foreign to us. So I feel Nigerians may have a tough time connecting with it. And I don't know if the foreigners or, you know, the foreign audience, people who watch it on Netflix, for example, if they'll be able to relate with it, knowing that, these people are Africans, but they're behaving like Americans. I also didn't like the characterization of Bolaji Ogumola's character, Chika. She's this born-again Christian type, and they really shoved that down our, down our throats several times. I didn't like how they did that. It felt excessive. They could have passed the message across without, you know, the constant praise the Lord, hallelujah, and, you know, all the text and all the imagery of her being a Christian, especially since at the end of the day, she wasn't really that good of a christian by you know seeing that she was sleeping with a married man i didn't like the third and final act in the 
I'm once again, I'm assuming you guys have seen the film. Sugar's mother and son come into town from the village, right? And um, all of a sudden, you know, she loses touch with them on the phone and she assumes the worst and she just heads out to go and look for her mother and her son, you know, throughout the whole of Lagos. Okay, that's all right, but they didn't really establish that the mother and son were actually in any real danger. We didn't see any conflict that they actually went went through that would cause you know sugar and tamara to leave the salon and go and be wandering around lagos to look for uh, sugar's mother and son so that third and final act it was kind of off and then the fact that sean Farquhar's character max is the one who ended up finding them just by taking a picture of them and wandering around town it felt very odd it, it, it just didn't it didn't connect it didn't make sense and finally there's the dynamic of how different people spend valentine's day because this film is actually set the day before valentine's day and on valentine's day and on the day before in the movie um there's all this talk about you know the things that happen on valentine's day who gets gifts who doesn't you know get gifts who loves their their boo who is just you know pretending to be in a happy relationship and all the normal things that happen around valentine's day right so there was an opportunity there. I don't think they exploited that opportunity well enough. And I think it's also because there wasn't that much romance in this movie. It's a movie about Valentine's Day, for goodness sake. There should have been couples in this thing that we were rooting for and characters, you know, that we were rooting for to get together. I mean, Uche Montana's character, Sugar, and Sean Farquhar's character, Max, they actually do end up together. But we're not invested enough in either of those characters individually for us to you know be happy that they end up together at the end of the movie the romance element of this film was just lacking and missing in my opinion now at the end of the day who should see this film before valentine's um see it if you can stomach a half-baked rom-com see it if um yeah that's it <laughs> see it if you can if you can manage a half-baked rom-com I can't think of any other reason why anyone would see this. There are several other things that I'd rather see or that I think anyone would see than this, both local and foreign. And um, I don't know, I can't even say you should see it because of any of the actors in the film. None of their performances were the best of any of the actors that I've seen, you know, that were in this thing, many of whom I'm actually a fan of, like Bolaji Ogumola, Megotanwa, um, oh, and Sean Farquhar. Their performances in this weren't the best. So I can't say see this film because of their performances in this film. I don't know if that makes sense. So yeah, that's how I felt about um, before Valentine's. It had it, There were several lost opportunities. Let me just put it, put it like that. It was annoying to watch last year. And it was annoying to watch again this year on Netflix. Fun fact, if I had actually done a top 20 worst Nollywood films of 2022 instead of a top 10, this film before Valentine's would have been in my top 20 worst of 2022. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this review or if you enjoyed uh, Before Valentine's, for whatever reason, please like this video by clicking on the like button just underneath the video and subscribe to my channel as well by clicking on the black subscribe button. If you've seen Before Valentine's, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about the movie. Did you enjoy it? I think some people will, will actually enjoy this film, but I think those are people who don't necessarily nitpick the way i do or who don't really care much for a solid story or you know a solid plot to a film but i do understand there will be people who enjoy this film if you're one of those people please let me know in the comment section down below what you enjoyed about before valentine's now on this channel i don't just do nollywood movie reviews i also talk about relationships appropriate for the time of month that we're in valentine's day sorry february and valentine's day coming around if you want to check out some of my past relationship videos or some of my past nollywood reviews you can click the card in the corner of the screen i'm going to review um dark october which also came out this weekend as well as uh the plan which also came out this weekend um i'm going to be reviewing those as well so look out for those too thank you guys so much for watching i will see you in the next one take care